Recently, one of Drake Bell's survivors took the stand to share her testimony. Her powerful statement outlines exactly how disgusting Drake is. She was literally 12 years old when he started messing around with her. This is who Drake is, and we cannot forget the disgusting things he did to this woman. So let's get into it. <music> As you guys know, Drake Bell is a 35-year-old singer and actor. He was definitely at his prime back when he was a child star on Nickelodeon, but the past few years, he's been traveling around and performing shows. Actually, more recently, he's been in some big trouble because he was charged with two crimes against children. If you guys have not seen my videos about him, definitely go check them out because today he was sentenced for his crimes and his survivor, the person who we did all this stuff too gave a testimony and it's crazy guys like i've only seen a couple minutes of it but we need to watch it together before we watch her testimony together let's quickly go through what went down so all those impatient people can know what happened and then we will sit together and watch this really crazy statement because she really put it all out there. So Drake was charged with two counts, one of attempted child endangering, which is a fourth degree felony, and then another charge for disseminating matter harmful to juveniles, which is a first degree misdemeanor. He and his survivor joined the Zoom call this morning, and she said that she's going to reveal all of the crimes that he's committed against her. She's currently 19 years old, but she first started talking to Drake when she was only 12. She claims that he was a hero to her and that she would have done anything for him. And then they maintained a relationship online. When she was 15 years old, the messages between them were extremely inappropriate. And supposedly at that concert in December 2017, he forced this teenager to do things with him that she did not want to do. She said that he is a monster and a danger to children, which... Remember, guys, he just recently revealed that he has a wife who he was dating at the beginning of 2017. So at the end of 2017, he was over here making her do things to him behind, like, at, at this concert, you know, behind the stage. Holy crap. So I guess he was cheating on his girlfriend at the time. It looks like they also did things at a hotel room in Cleveland. Keep in mind that this person is actually Canadian and she had to go through like Canadian officials to United States officials. And she actually said that he's sorry he's been caught. He committed these crimes with pride. So, I mean... I, and I believe her. I feel like he's so comfortable with himself. And honestly, this hearing is very frustrating because he kind of just got away with it all. Drake's lawyers claim that he had no idea how old she was, which she claims is a lie. He definitely knew. Um, they also claim that Drake has already gone through so much with his loss of unemployment over this that he's paid for his crimes already, which is so mind boggling to me. Something really interesting here and what we were kind of talking about a second ago is that the defense attorney said that there were no claims of misconduct until the victim learned about Belle's fiance. So until like that person supposedly heard about Janet, she wasn't going to press anything. But it shows now that like there was some overlap between him and this child and his current wife, which is just extremely messy. So pretty much the judge served him with two years of probation and that's about it. And he's going to be listed inside the database that, you know, names all of the creepazoids that live in your area. Um, so not a lot of justice here. Now let's go ahead and watch a piece of this testimony together. Actually, I'm not really going to pause during it because I'm not really feeling that well. So we're going to sit together and watch it together. I've only watched a few minutes of it and it's about 16 minutes. So we're going to calmly sit here together and watch it. There are going to be words bleeped out because she's talking about some really extreme things. If you want to go watch this fully, I'll try to link it below. I can never remember to link it below. So I say try because I'm going to try to remember, but one of you guys will comment and then I'll end up posting it. So you guys can go watch it for yourself, but we're going to sit down and react to it together. Again, I'm going to try not to pause, but if she says some crazy stuff, we got to talk about it. So we don't actually know her name, but if you do look at her Zoom, the initials say SG. So we'll call her SG or, you know, you know survivor throughout this video. And um, I do want to say to her that I, I am sending a lot of love and just strength to her because it's extremely hard to like get into a courtroom and stand up 
up for yourself, especially when you're facing someone like Drake who has hurt you so much. And even I feel like, you know, maybe it's easier on Zoom, but I feel like it's almost harder on Zoom because like you really don't have control over what's going on here. And it's like you'll see whenever his lawyer starts speaking, she's over here like what like shocked at what they're saying because they're trying to flip the script and I feel like maybe if it was all in person there would have been more you know pressure to really bring up how bad Drake is but let's go ahead and get into this I chose to write this statement because I want justice to be served more than anything the only time that the defendant has appeared in court in person was on June 3rd for his arraignment which was before the media found out about this case he has appeared in court today over Zoom instead of appearing in person. This doesn't surprise me and shows what a coward he is. But I am not a coward, and that is why I'm going to reveal all of the details of the crimes that he committed against me. Aside from Cleveland, the only other time that the defendant assaulted me was in October of 2017. It happened in Illinois in the middle of the night. He digitally penetrated me in the back seat of my aunt's car while she was driving him to a friend's house. The Illinois police only agreed to move forward with that case if the Ohio police did not pursue this case. I don't understand why. Regardless of their reasons why, he has gotten away with in Illinois. So today, I will be discussing the details of the crimes that he has pleaded guilty to and the impact that they have had on me. But before I do that, I would like to provide you with some context on my relationship with the defendant and what led up to these crimes. This portion of my statement explains how he started grooming me when I was 12 years old. I started off as a fan of him. I was definitely one of his biggest fans. Everyone who knew me as a child knew that he was a hero to me. I would have done anything for him. When I was 11, I learned that my aunt had a mutual friend who knew the defendant. That led to my aunt taking me to meet him for the first time in 2014 when I was 12. I adored him and he instantly made me feel that he adored me right back. From the time I was 12 to 15, my aunt took me to meet him and spend time with him many times. After I met him for the first time, he started speaking to me more frequently online. I confided in him about very personal things about myself, including my struggle with my mental health. I went to him for advice and for someone to lean on, and he gave me that. I felt protected and loved by him. When I was 13... I know we're pausing right now, but, like, what is Drake's face, like, throughout this? It's all, like... Like, he's like, is he shocked? But he's also, like, connecting the dots. Like, I feel like it's a mix of him playing like he's shocked, but also, like I said, like, connecting the dots in his brain and being like, oh, yeah, that did happen. Anyways, again, like, so much love to this person because it is so hard to do this, and you can tell that it's, like, very real for her. He and I went to him for boy advice. He told me that I was beautiful and that boys were stupid. He then sent me a photo of myself that he had screen cap from my Instagram telling me that I was, quote, such a cutie. I took and uploaded that photo online a year earlier when I was 12 years old. He saved that photo of me onto his phone. I didn't realize how disturbing that was until many years later. Another instance of creepy behavior happened when I was spending time with him at the age of 14. He told me that he couldn't believe how much I'd grown since he last saw me. He said that I wasn't little anymore and I was, quote, a woman now. When I was 15, I noticed a huge shift regarding his treatment and attitude towards me. When I was younger, he was sweet and actually wanted to talk to me about my life. But at 15, he started sending me messages about how, quote, hot I was. In the summer of 2017, I messaged him, telling him that I was going to see him in concert in the following months. He replied by telling me that he couldn't wait to see me. He also asked me, quote, how old are you now? I told him 15. He then told me to, quote, hurry up. Don't smile at me. Not too long after that, his messages to me became blatantly. Wait, was that her telling him not to smile? Or I don't know. I don't know if he. Hmm. 
This eventually led to many months of inappropriate messages and photos being exchanged over Instagram and Snapchat. The photos exchanged included photos of my body and photos of his body and his In the beginning, I was excited. I thought that he really liked me and I thought that I meant something to him, but that didn't last. Back then, the last thing I wanted was to lose him, not only because I was completely infatuated with him, but because I became scared of him. There were times where I felt really uncomfortable talking to him in such graphic ways and wanted to be left alone. But I had a very hard time telling him that because I was terrified of upsetting him. So I would make excuses. When I did, quote, upset him, he made me cry. If I didn't give him what he wanted, he was spiteful. It made me feel guilty. He made me feel disgusting and absolutely awful about myself. At that point, it was clear that he was the one who was in control. I felt trapped and stuck because I still idolized him. He had me wrapped around his finger. This caused a tremendous amount of stress and shame crimes that he committed against me in Cleveland. Okay, I guess she froze there, guys. Just, you don't think it's like my video. I think she froze in the Zoom call. Cleveland, I want to make something very clear. The reason that these particular incidents did not result any further than oral was because the defendant knew that I was menstruating at the time. Had I not been menstruating then, he would have me. Don't look at me like that because he would tell me how badly he wanted to penetrate me but use much more vulgar language. On December 1st, 2017, my aunt took me to the Odeon Concert Club to watch him perform. That night, the defendant took me backstage to be alone with him. He started kissing me and the night ended and him having me perform oral on him twice. The next incident happened on December 2nd, 2017, while I was alone with him in his hotel room. He had talked to me about seeing me one last time before we all left Cleveland and went home. So we went to his hotel to say goodbye. In his hotel room, he started kissing me and had me perform oral on him again. My aunt was right outside the room waiting in the hallway while this was happening. She trusted him and never thought that he would ever do anything to hurt me. Now, I would like to bring up an individual who has known about these crimes for years. This person is the defendant's partner, Janet Vaughn. In January of 2018, I was engaging in an inappropriate conversation with who I thought was the defendant until I received a message back from the defendant's account claiming to be Janet. That was the first interaction I ever had with her. This confused and devastated me. And I begged the defendant for an explanation about that exchange with her. He brushed it off by repeatedly claiming that everything was fine. After these crimes happened, I tried to shake off all of the gross feelings that I had. Ignoring those feelings only made them worse. I felt so miserable, broken, and humiliated. I was struggling to sleep every night. The sexual messages continued for a while after that until I eventually put a stop to them. I did that by confronting him about what he had done to me. I confronted him in September of 2018, just weeks before I had reported the Illinois and Ohio crimes to my local police. I chose to confront him about what he had done to me because I wanted to gain my power back. I had to suck up all of the fear that I felt in order to confront him. He ignored me for many days at first. Eventually, he tried apologizing to me for, quote, breaking my heart, but deleted those messages quickly afterward. His crimes are not heartbreaking or whatever other loose ter term he uses. They are disgusting. He didn't care then and he doesn't care now. That makes me feel worthless. I confronted Janet as well. When I confronted her, she claimed that she didn't know anything about these crimes. She denied speaking with me in January of 2018 and claimed that wasn't her. She told me that none of this was my fault and apologized to me. 
She also told me that she wanted to, quote, jump in front of a car. However, at one point, she asked me to let her know when I was going to the police with this case for her own benefit. Of course, I did not do that. She knows what happened and she doesn't care. Janet is just one of the few people who have tried to protect him and the others will now know exactly who they are. The pain that the defendant has caused me is indescribable and it worsens every day. Being used by somebody who meant the world to me has left me feeling more hurt than I've ever been before. I am now 19 and my life hasn't been the same since I was 15. I think about these crimes every single day. I feel like I'm in a constant dark place. Sometimes I wish I could disappear. Is he on his phone? What is he reaching over in the corner for? I think he's going to grab some water or something, but is he just like on, like, oh my gosh, I feel like he's so disconnected from this whole thing. Here, so I can forget about what happened. Right after I reported him, my parents sent me to a therapist. So far, they have spent $7,620 in hopes that she can help me move forward from this. These crimes have especially impacted my relationship with my aunt. For a while, I could not fathom how my aunt had no idea what was going on, and that made me doubt the trust that I had in her. To this day, there is still tension and awkwardness between her and myself. Every time I speak to her and look at her, I think about the defendant and what he did to me. My relationship with my aunt will never be the same, and that breaks my heart. My whole family is hurting because I am hurting. Their trust in my aunt has been affected too. My aunt blames herself for leaving me alone with the defendant. My parents blame themselves for placing their trust in my aunt to protect me and keep me safe. It's awful to hear them say that. Every night I dread going to sleep because I don't wanna see him in my nightmares. I have lost many nights of sleep because of this. I've lost count over how many times I fell asleep in class when I was in high school due to so many sleepless nights. I also occasionally had to leave school early due to having panic attacks that were triggered by these incidents. During these panic attacks, I would struggle to breathe, sweat, shake, cry, and often faint. When I do sleep and do see in my nightmares, it throws off my entire day. I'm sorry. These crimes have affected my dating life as well. Every day I have since gone on has ended with me going home crying. Every time I feel the slightest bit vulnerable around a guy, all I can think of and see is the defendant. I have serious trust issues because of him. Dating your teenagers should be a fun experience and should not be something that brings up trauma caused by a grown man. The defendant's crimes against me are the worst things that he could have ever done to me. He was such a huge part of my childhood and in return, he ruined my life. Back when I confronted him, he told me that he didn't want me to hate him. I don't hate him, I loathe him. <sighs> now I would like to ask you something important. Whether a person has a lot of influence, some or none at all, these are crimes that are unforgivable and inexcusable. They can never be taken back. He was calculating. He preyed on me and he abused me. He is a monster and a danger to children. I am kindly asking you to send a powerful message that these crimes are never okay, no matter who a person is. I also want to bring up the letter that I wrote to you. In my letter, I explain why the defendant is not remorseful for his crimes. I described how he has publicly found humor in them and how he has used tactics to gain sympathy from the public. He could have easily ignored the people online who were mocking this case. Instead, he went out of his way to let them know that he thinks it's funny and he can give me that look all he wants. He knows exactly what I'm talking about. <sighs> The crimes that he committed against me are some kind of sick joke to him. My suffering is not for him to laugh at or his leverage to brag about becoming a good man now that he is a father. So today, if the defendant tries to tell you that he is remorseful, 
I am asking you to appreciate that actions speak louder than words. Since his arraignment and plea hearing, his actions have been loud and clear, and they have shown that he simply does not care and does not have an ounce of remorse. I won't be surprised if he tries to manipulate everybody into believing that he's changed, but he can't fool me. If he is truly sorry for anything, he is sorry that he has finally been caught. I can assure you of that. He committed these crimes against me with pride. A defendant who clearly feels no remorse for his crimes deserves to be given the maximum sentence possible. I will never forget what he did to me. I idolized and looked up to him and he took that and broke it in the most sickening way possible. He is the epitome of evil. I deserved better than to be used for his sick desires and for my suffering to be used for his amusement. Jared Drake Bell is a and that is his legacy. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you. Oh my gosh, guys. I apologize for not giving you guys a trigger warning earlier. I am really sorry about that. Um, that was a lot, and it was a lot more serious than I actually even thought the crimes were initially. So I'm shocked. Let's hear a little bit of his lawyer's defense because I want you to see how flabbergasted this survivor is. And then we'll hear a little bit from Drake. But again, I'll try to link below the original thing if you want to watch it in full. But these are kind of like the highlights of it. So now we're going to watch Drake's lawyer try to defend him. Uh, I believe they're down in the courtroom, so you can't actually see them on camera. But let's go ahead and listen. His conduct was not correct. It was not proper uh, for what he did. Uh, and unfortunately, he did not know um, who he was speaking with and the damage that this was going to do. But I have to be very clear uh, because it would not be fair to sit there and uh, just accept everything that was said. What occurred or what the victim is claiming to have occurred here, not only am I saying that it did not happen, not only would Mr. Bell say that that did not happen, but the evidence in the state, uh, the evidence in this case would suggest it did not happen. And again, we all know that this prosecutor's office would pursue child charges and go to great lengths and aggressively as they should. And we've seen it many times. If they felt that that was a provable case, I'm sure we would not be talking here today about any disseminating uh, matter harmful uh, to a minor. Mr. Bell, go ahead. So his lawyer was just like... <laughs> trying to write off the legitimacy of uh, the survivor and what she went through and claiming that if the if this all really did happen, Judge, then we would be looking at far more offensive crimes, which, again, I don't know. I don't know why they didn't pursue, like, higher charges. Maybe they just didn't have the proof. Like, I'm assuming that it's just, like, lack of evidence to be like, oh, this for sure happened, even though I 100% believe her. But let's go ahead and end off this video by listening to what Drake has to say. Um... Your Honor, I, I just want to say today that I accept this plea because my conduct was wrong. Um, I'm sorry that the victim was harmed in any way, but that was obviously not my intention. Um, I have taken this matter very, very seriously. Um, and again, I just want to apologize to her and, and uh, anyone else who may have been affected by my actions that's all drake had to say against everything she said all he had to say was like i'm sorry that i hurt her i never intended to holy crap guys like i i'm just so shocked that like he does really seem careless about it and i really do believe that that girl has it all right like she knows exactly what she's saying he has zero remorse and this is what he's going to be remembered for so, oh my gosh, a lot of you were like, you make too much Drake Bell videos. Well, there's a lot to this, and I'm glad that we're talking about it still because a lot of this stuff just goes under the radar, and we need to send SJ this support, even though we don't really know who she is, but I just, you know, just, you know, through vibes, send her the good vibes because she's going through a lot. Drake got a slap on the wrist, and he's just out here doing whatever he still wants to. So, um, I, I feel like Drake should be known as a risk to children because that's what he was to her. There aren't enough Disney trips and wives and kids that you could have to make us forget about that. So 
I want to hear what you guys think in the comments below. Again, I'm so sorry for not giving you a trigger warning because it was really intense, but I want to hear what you guys think. If you guys have any video ideas for me, here is my email and I'll see you in a new one soon. Bye guys.